All right, so I'm here with Charlie Sachs, and we're we're doing this video the second time because <laughs> technology got Did the best work. of us. Now there wasn't a lot of technology on the 180, was there? No. The ECM has never failed on no, the 180. No, no, never, never had any computer issues with that one. So there you go. So for everybody, what is this tractor? She's a 1972 Alice Chalmers 180, and it's been in the family. Um, my grandfather bought it from Mel Ryberg when Mel sold in Northfield. It was Mel's demonstrator tractor, so it had a few hours on, and it was a year or so old when my grandfather got it. It was the first diesel we ever bought. And you said at the time it was not the big horse because you had a 190. Right. My dad had a 190 gas, and of course, a 190 gas and this 180 would both pull 416s. Even though the 190 was supposed to be a bigger tractor. Um, shortly after that, dad bought a 190 XT diesel. Oh. So, so you got the 180 and the 190 gas, and I'd be willing to bet that the diesel probably was impressive compared to the gas. It was, and like I said, when Dad traded the 190 for the 190 XT diesel, then that came with 516s instead of 416s. Yeah. You know, you, you could pull a bigger plow. Um, that was an XT, right? Yes, that was. I believe that was a Series 2 or 3. That have I, a cab? So it had a like a year-round cab or something on it. I still remember, the, you know, it was... Back in the 70s, there wasn't much for factory cabs, early 70s. No, I, I don't think Alice really had much of a factory cab until, what, like the 200? The 200 had a factory cab. They really didn't have a, tractors that came out with factory cabs till like the 7000 series. Right. You know. Yep. So, he bought her new in, in Northfield, yep. Minnesota. Now you're in Iota, Minnesota, so yep. that's a long ways away from there. Uh, so back in 2002, I bought this farm in Iota and we moved here. So you picked up the farm and moved. and moved. And that had to be a big change. Uh, that's, yeah, when you, when you go to pack up all those, you're, you, you, you clean out every building. Right. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, and you suddenly have, did you take your cows with? I brought most of them. I did buy some of the herd that, uh, from the people I bought the farm from. Okay, okay. Cause I, I basically took the top end of both herds and put them together, and that's what we did. Yeah, because there's an adjustment. Cattle don't. They're a lot like people. They don't like change. Yes. So that's uh, was did the cows adapt okay? Um, I had a couple older cows that did really really well. Mostly what I brought from home was two year olds or some springers. Okay. Cause, yeah, and you went. You had said you had a tie stall barn. Yes. There, and then you went to a parlor and freestall setup. Yeah. A lot of times an old cow isn't going to know. The, the, it was always said, old cow, you can take an old cow out of a parlor and put her in a freestall barn, but you can't take her out of a tie stall barn and make her go the other way. Right. And um, the couple older cows I did try it with, I did get lucky, and they, they did make that transition. Okay. Uh, but that was, that was always the word. If you're going to an auction sale years ago, you know, don't don't buy a cow out of a tie stall barn if you've got a parlor. Right. So at that time, um, did you have black and white cows or what did you have? Those were mostly black and whites. Um, right now we're milking probably 90% of our herd is Swiss. There's still some Holsteins and some jerseys in there. Uh, the Swiss came along a few years ago, and we've liked them, and we've just kind of 
ended up with more Swiss than Holsteins. Well, and yeah, colored cattle um, spent, at one point in the U.S., half the cows were probably colored cattle, yep. and then they almost were completely eliminated yep. at one point, and they're coming back. Well, and that goes to, you know, the components in milk, the butter fat and the protein. Um, these co-ops today want milk they can use. They don't want a truckload of water. Right, because, and we talked about it before, things changed dramatically in the last 30 years. Oh, yeah. Going from um, butter was terrible and butter was going to kill you to today you have dietitians telling you you need you need to eat your butter and, and don't eat the margarine and you know right I, I yeah I've seen all of it and we, we, we prefer the brown Swiss and our, our average butter fat here going to the co-op is 4.2 to 4.4 yeah you know we're getting paid pretty good for our butter fat right now. Well, right. The butter fat is a big component that's worth a lot of money. Um, and protein still. Protein is, is still worth money. Protein is one of those things you can't feed your cows to change the protein all that much, where with butter fat, you can kind of adjust your ration for it. Right. Um, protein is a more of a breed thing and it's bred into cows and yeah and, and protein uh is the thing that you want so dairy consumption has grown in butter i think ice cream ice cream and cheese. biggest one is pizza cheese right yep and if you're gonna have cheese you need protein you need the protein, and to a certain extent, you need the butter fat and the other solids to make the cheese. Right. So, um, as we've gone away from a fluid milk, uh, you know, The consumer. market has changed, and nowadays, the higher component herds are, are the ones that are, are coming out better on that top side because they've got the higher components. Right. Well, and the reason I want to talk about the milk market kind of like that is you didn't just switch a farm. No, you, I had to switch co-ops too. Right. So originally you were with uh, the Hastings co-op. Yep. And Hastings was, Hastings was a bottling plant. It was a bottling milk. plant and they sold most of that for fluid. When I moved, they thought it was too far to come get it, so I signed up with Plainview Milk Products. Yep. And as you know, that we, we dry and make powder and we make butter. And yes, we do sell a big percentage of that to Quick Trip to be bottled. Which it, I just had an orange dreamsicle milk. How is that? It's good. I haven't, I have, I've heard about these, but I haven't. The, vanilla, the vanilla milkshake one is probably the best. Okay. milk I've ever had but uh, um, yeah they uh, but Hastings back in the day they did sport shakes we were yep. talking about that yep and then they were polka dot milk which was all the Tom Thumb stores yep for a lot of years so yeah your your old farm yep. was just south of the cities yes it was on the it was south of the cities now, from here to drive to Minneapolis is probably two hours, ain't it? Um, if you were, say, going to go from here to, like, the state fairgrounds, it's just a hair over two hours. Right. Yep. And whereas before, back then, if you wanted to drive to... Uh, I could be at the state fairgrounds in 45 minutes to an hour. Right. Depending on which way you went and how the traffic yep. was. And you could be in the south suburbs in... In minutes. Right. So, no. yeah, so you had an opportunity. You weren't looking to move, but you had... Wasn't looking to move, but an opportunity presented itself. And the thought was the kids were all very small, not even in school yet. If you're going to do this, 
now's the time to do it. Right. Don't wait till they're 12, 14, 16 years old and they expect them to pick up and move. Well, and, you know, even though the kids are young, but you're going to, if time goes on, you want to bring kids into the operation, you couldn't expand up there, could you? There, there, there was, like I said, you could not do that and compete with the guys farther north of you that were selling land for big money and driving the land price up where you were at. You can't go do that. You can't compete with those kind of guys. No, no. Um, and, and it was the same with, you know, the price of rent. Yeah. It's, uh, and luckily, like you said, you didn't rent a lot of ground. No. So when you moved down here, you were able to just raise your own feed with the land you bought. Yep. Because that's where it gets to be hard is it's not as easy as moving a farm. No. Because the farm is one thing, but it's the relationships that if you can't, if you sever those relationships, you have to start all over and to try and get rented ground in a place where you're not. When nobody knows you. Right. You know, I, we've been here over 20 years and, well, it's a lot easier to do things now, but when you first move, move no, nobody really knows who you are or, or anything like that, you know. Right. Now, feed wise we never talked did you were you getting uh who are you getting feed from up there oh that was coming out of interstate mills is what it was called at the time it was the feed division of what would have been known as cannon valley co-op and i don't know what it is now but you know that was truck quite a ways too okay but you switched feed suppliers then when you came down here yeah. also? Yeah. Okay. So then, you know, you, you switch your feed, you're, you know, you got to get a different vet. Well, you, you're, 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 you know, you got, you got to redo all that. You, you know, you, well, you got to get to know and work with another vet. You got to work with another nutritionist. You know, it, it's all, everything's new and you kind of go, well, where do I go for this or where do I go for that, you know? Or like your dairy uh, equipment supplies. Well, and that that was fairly easy because just up the road in Plainview, there's always been a couple of good dealers. And, yep. you know, where at home you, you traveled over an hour for that kind of stuff. Right. You know, the infrastructure here is much more designed for a dairyman than it was anymore at home. And at one point up there, there was a fair, there was quite a bit of dairy. There was. When I was a little kid growing up, there was 15 or more guys in the township I grew up in that had herds of cows. Yeah. And I was the last one. So up there, for the most part, guys up there are cash crop. Yep. Um, seed production is, you know, I mean, there's some guys that do some, that feed some steers. There's some steers, there's a few hogs, there is a couple dairies left in the area up there. They're few and far between. Right. You know. And down here, it's, this is an area with a lot of dairies. Yes. Um, which it's, it's, I think if you've got the infrastructure, the dairy will stay around there. When you lose that, that kind of just... When, when you there. look at like Olmstead and Wabasha and Winona counties, there's a lot of cows in those three counties. Yeah. You know, that, that drives a lot of businesses in this part of the country. Right, right. Um, so it was, were you nervous though about a new farm? I don't know if I was really nervous somebody asked me that at the time and it's like well I, I just want a farm so I'm gonna move and well you won't have any friends or this or that I says that'll take time you know yeah um, but my biggest concern was well let's do this before the kids are old enough to go to school so that they start school there they finish school there right that would that to me it just didn't seem like it was even an option 
wait till they were teenagers and then say, well, we're pulling you out of school and we're moving you all the way down here and you're not, you know, I just didn't think that was something that we needed to do. Right. Yep. You know, so the, the move went good. You said like the cattle, they didn't, you know, and the cows that were here were probably fine. Yes. And, and it, it, it made it a lot easier for the couple we bought the farm from then because they had made the remark they didn't know if they could actually watch the cows be sold on an auction or something like that. Okay. You know. so, so did they stay close? Um, for a while they lived in Rochester. They now live up in the cities next to one of their sons. Okay. So. Yeah, I suppose to have that, have them around and stuff, that probably helped you somewhat. It, it the helped me having them around when I would get stuck or wouldn't know quite where something yeah. was, you know. Yeah. Um, the wall and, yeah, they, this, this circuit breaker is a little fussy if you Well, do. Th those were the kinds of things that, yes, that, that really helped, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, didn't know quite where, 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 where is this water pipe? And I, I know I called Tom one morning and said, Tom, I've got a puddle of water here in a spot. And he said, you know, there's three water pipes under the ground right there <laughs> that go to different places. So he says, I would get somebody with a backhoe. And sure enough, one of those pipes had a hole in it. Yep. You know, but it was earlier in the spring and all of a sudden you got a puddle where there's not supposed to be one yeah you know well and and land. when you didn't build it or you didn't install it and put it in the, there can be some real head scratcher moments there you know oh yeah well and then you had to learn land again like yes i know my farm from years of farming my farm you know where you can go when it's a little wet and when you can't go there. Yep. I know what I should plant here and what I shouldn't plant there. Yep. I know, you know, that that took time. Yep. Um, did Was that a little tricky at times? Uh, the former owner did tell me if we ever had a wet year, I needed to watch this spot and this spot and that spot. He didn't tell me about another spot. I found that one on my own. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that can be a little bit of a, an issue, you know, when you're used to knowing, well, I can't do this, you know. Now, like, we've had a lot of rain. Now I, I know where I could go in a field and where I couldn't. Right. You know. Yeah, that... And after 20-some years, I've kind of got it figured out down here, so I'm, I'm good to go now. What, did your crop rotation change here versus there? I don't really think so. I mean, were there, was, is there a few more acres here than there was there? Um, just a slight few. It, it, I, don't, I don't think it changed when we first moved. Now, as we got more into doing some different crop things with some winter rye and some no-till and that, it's changed more in the last 20 years. Yeah. You know. Well, I thought maybe you have to be, like, if you're running more cattle, um, you know, you got to be heavier corn silage because you got more head or, or something. But, um yeah, the acres on that may have changed a little bit, but you always figure you needed so much corn silage for so many head and so much hay. and Right. You know, now, like I said, that more changed with the introducing and using the cover crop for the winter rye as far as the feed source. You know, that that's cut down on some alfalfa acres. Right. And alfalfa is expensive. It's expensive to grow. Yes. You know, um, and it's a lot more work than it used to be. We have bugs and stuff now, and yes, um, so yeah, that that changed, and and farming and has changed. So think back early, think back to your childhood, and you were going to make hay in your mind. Well, 
the 180 is probably on the small square baler, ain't it? Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of flat racks, and I'm standing on one of those behind the baler. Right. And today, there's very little small square dry hay ever made. Yep. And for the most part, you don't make a lot of dry hay, period, do you? Um, some grass hay for some young calves. Otherwise, everything else is baled and wrapped. Right. Baleage. So that, you know, silos and, and hay and haylage came about because we didn't have early spring weather to put up high quality baled hay. Well, and it, you know, that, and then, you know, herds got bigger and it, labor got less. It takes less labor to chop it than it does to make small square bales. Yeah. Yep. You know, a lot of that was all due to labor savings. Right. You know, two guys can chop haylage and fill a silo. You, you need a, well, you can small square bale with two guys, but it's a lot of work. Right. You know. Yeah. So that, that shift happened. Equipment has gotten bigger. I mean that, you know, that a 180 size tractor isn't doing near that much anymore. Pulls a hay rake, that's about it. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was a go-to tractor. Oh, that tractor did everything from grind and feed to plant corn to when we got the first portable TMR mixer, it ran that TMR mixer for probably 10 years. Yep. You know. Now, did no, he, did he buy a new plow with this tractor when he got no, it? No, he had a 416's Moline plow. Was it a three-point three mounted? Okay. So this has a three-point, not the snap coupler. Yep, this has got three-point hitch. Okay. Um, so you had a Moline plow. Yep. Okay. Alice, was, Alice had a fairly good plow, actually. Um, the five bottom was an Alice. Okay. And I always joked with my dad that one would see a button weed in the middle of 40 acres and plug up. <laughs> it was... I, I never liked that Alice plow and corn stalks. Um, about the time I got out of high school, <clears throat> I bought a 720 International. Oh, yeah, I each had a plow. And uh, that would at least plow understanding corn stalks. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. But even those have went by the wayside in favor of chisel plows or no till. So Right. Yeah, it's there's such little moldboard plowed anymore. We'll use one occasionally when we get rid of an alfalfa field. Okay. Other than that, we use a chisel plow or we just no till into it. Yep. Yep. I tell CJ it's cause sitting in a tractor ain't as much fun as it used to be. <laughs> but it's not even that. With the no-till, I, I make one pass. I don't use all that extra expensive diesel fuel working ground up just for something to do. Well, and, and face it, every day earlier it gets planted, the better the yield. Yep. You know, we only have so much time to grow a crop. Yep. We need as much of that as we can. So I think that's, uh, you know, we, we've changed so much on that as far as, you know, now, like I remember as a kid, guys would start planting corn in May. and they, they were lucky. Yeah. And then they would continue on until the middle of June. Yep. And what we found out was that if you're planting early and longer day varieties and that, that you can get more yield and no different than with the haying when you're putting up dry small squares and you gotta you gotta wait for the weather to right. do that and you shouldn't be doing your first crop in the middle of june let alone fourth of july the way it used to oh gosh no you know you around here this year we were doing first crop hey about mother's day right you know and that'll change a little bit with the year but if you're waiting till the first of june you, you don't have very good quality feed right you know, um, it's, and, and I guess you can do what you want with that, but if you're trying to melt cows off of it, you're going to give an awful lot of money to the feed man. Well, and that's just it though. 
The margin for profit in any type of agriculture today is so small that you have to get as much as you can out of what you, you know, what you're... What you're growing. Right. So, you know, and, and that's, that could be crops, but that can also be milk. You need to get as much milk, which you're growing milk out in the field. Well, face it, I mean, the, the agronomist and the nutritionist aren't here to make you money. They're, they're here to put money in the co-op's pocket. Right. You know, you, you've got to grow as, as good a quality feed and crops as you can if you're going to make this work. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the, so the 180, she didn't, uh, it didn't get a new plow with that. That was 416s though, you said, right? Yep. Um, I, it, I'll take that back, Ryan. I'm not 100% sure I was pretty little. Okay. If that was a used plow or if that was would have been a brand new one that he bought from Werner's okay. on a leftover. Yeah, because Werner's were a Moline dealer. Yes. So, like I said, I, don't, I just remember it was 416 Moline. It was the toggle trip. It wasn't the automatic reset version. Yep. Um, actually, CJ's got an Oliver which is the exact same plow. Yep. You know. Yeah. So it, it was important for haying a lot. Yep. This tractor cut hay, you said. And cut, it cut a lot of hay. It pulled a lot of chopper boxes. It was always, this was always a nice tractor to unload chopper boxes with because when you got off the platform to hook the PTO up, you didn't have to get back on. You could stand on the ground and pull the clutch and, Put the PTO in gear. Yep. You know, you could reach the throttle from standing on the ground. Yeah. You know, so I always thought it was a great tractor for that because you just didn't have to keep climbing up and on the tractor all the time. Yeah. You know. And you said this one didn't really spread manure in the winter because you had a d17 with a heat hauser right yep that was the loader tractor for many years and then when you bought this farm you went to liquid manure yes and you aren't pulling a big tank with the 180. no <laughs> no uh i it it may have pulled one of them around the yard empty at times but it just that's just a little too much weight right yep you know so she uh she wasn't doing that job. She, she's been raking hay or corn stalks the last few years. We, we try and run it some, but like I said, it's not really big enough to, to do anymore. You right. know? Um, we will get it out in the fall when we're grinding high moisture corn. If we get backed up and they will use it just to pull the wagons up to the mill and unload them and then pull them away and you can hook up to them with a bigger tractor and take them back to the field. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. But like I said, it, it's not that big and it's not that heavy to be able to put it on the bigger manure spreaders or, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yesterday when I bailed hay for a guy and had to drive an hour to get there, well, it would have taken me three with this one. <laughs> and I don't know if I'd have wanted to sit outside and, and bale hay with it anymore. No, no. Um, cabs, cabs were, once you got a good cab, that was, I always said that was probably as important as anything on the farm to me when I got my first really nice cab tractor. Because yep. as a dairy farmer, I could chore all day. Mm -hmm. Like there was always something to do. But I could get my field work done at night. Because you had a nice cab, you were comfortable, good lights. You weren't out there in the dust and the dirt or yep. cold. You know, um, we did it. But there, there's a lot nicer tractors with cabs on to go out in the field with. Yeah. Yep. So then... You like the 190 or the 180 diesel enough? Your dad bought a 190 XT diesel. Yep. Did you keep getting bigger with Alice? So we did the the 
first 190 was was a little bit of a problem and I'm not going to get into all of that but they found out after five years and five overhauls that the block was warped when it was cast okay so the tractor got sent down the road yep that returned as a 200 with that was the first tractor we had with a factory cab okay um, shortly after that the old d17 was retired and he bought another 190 XT, but it had a loader on it. So we now had a that had an old cozy cab or something. But now we had a tractor and loader with a cab. Yep. And uh, in amongst all those time frames, there was two more 180s that showed up. Okay. So one time we had three 180s because they were just seemed to be the right tractor for doing chores or cleaning barn or grinding feed or whatever. Yep. You know. Um, the 190 with the loader and the cab worked good because we had cattle on two different farms. So in the wintertime, drive up and down the road. Yep. Uh, you know, and it was two and a half miles between farms. So it wasn't that far, but farther than you'd want to go on a day when it's zero yeah. out, you know. So it, it worked, but. Um, that was a diesel too then, right? Yes. And then I don't know about the mid eighties. I blew the one ninety up grinding feed one morning. And the day before that they had locked the transmission in the two hundred up. So we ended up getting a seventy ten. Okay. And we had that for, for many years. I uh, ended up fixing the locked up transmission, the one with the blown motor got sent down the road. Yep. Well, 7010, that's a black belly. Yep. That had, that was the first power shift. Okay. Uh, I, I don't remember when we, that had to been late 90s when we traded that off on something else. Okay. Um, the one he bought a 80 30 two wheel drive outright at one point in time in the late 90s yep um and i don't even remember what what we did with that one where that went but it's not here <laughs> so uh which yeah then you ended up getting into front wheel assist uh so that would have been the 70 10 we had a Agco Alice 8630 for a short time that had the front wheel assist and had a loader on it that was, you know, first quick catch loader we had. Yep. Um, had some transmission trouble with that one and we didn't keep it more than a year. Then we ended up with a 9745. And I had that quite a few years before I traded it off for that DT160 that's on the baler. Okay. So, but once you got front wheel assist, it was nice. Um, we've, we've got enough tractors around here today, and there's only a couple of them that don't have front wheel assist. Yeah. You know, and one would say, well, what do you need front wheel assist for on a TMR mixer? Well, because when we get snow, it's nice to be able to move. Right. You know, um, the front wheel assist is, you know, especially with hauling liquid manure and then trying to do tillage after it is a lifesaver. Yeah. You know. Oh, it, it's amazing what a difference it makes as far as pulling. Yeah. You know. I mean, I can do things with front wheel assist tractor that you wouldn't dream of doing with this 180 because you just wouldn't get the traction. Right, right. <coughs> so then, where were you getting the new ones that you were buying from? Uh, we used to do a lot of business with David Isaacson in Nearstrand when he was still there. Okay. Um, and he's been gone since 2013 or 2014. Uh, Hamill equipment here in Chatfield, Bernie and Linus Hamill, always were Alice Chalmers dealers. They still handle egg co parts but they're more into red stuff now okay but that's just a few miles away so works out pretty good yeah well and they helped you out with 
because you move here with Alice's and you're yep. like, boy, I'm a long ways away from. To go to, go to Near Strand from here take you an hour. Yep. You know, I can be in Chatfield in 10 minutes. Yeah. You know. So. So. Yeah, that was nice to know that, you know, well, they can get, get all my parts and my filters and what yeah. have you. So. Yep. So then, you were talking earlier that you had a tractor that you really wanted to buy. Yep. Yeah. We could probably look at it. Well, it's it's up there. It's just one I saw advertised when I was a kid in high school, and I thought I always wanted one of those. And I got my 8070, so it's up here in the front of the shed. All right, so this is the 8070. Would, would you say this is... A favorite? It, it's it, it probably would be my favorite. It's just one of those things that you saw from your childhood and it made an impression and oh, I said one day I would have one. And it took a long time but I finally found one. Do you remember, did you go to the state fair when you were young? Yeah. Do you remember Machinery Hill? Yep. So did you remember when these were up there on Machinery yes. Hill? Yeah. It's the first time I saw one in person. Yeah. And they, it just, I don't know, there's something about the way they looked and the size of them. I just always kind of liked them. Yeah, they were, uh, oh, they, Alice had a pretty nice tractor going here. And, you know, they had, front wheel assist was part of the tractor, not an add-on. Yes. Um, Where did this one come from? So I actually bought this from Mark Heitman. Mark bought it out of Iowa. Yep. It had a transmission problem. I bought it really reasonable for Mark and fixed the transmission issue. Yep. But if you look in the front, Ryan, I don't know if you can read that sticker. San Joaquin tractor. Yep. CJ called them when we first got it home. Yep. They went back to the second owners of the tractor. The guy says, if you ever come out here, stop in. We'll go to the paper. I can tell you who bought it brand new. Really? And he sent CJ some pictures of their dealership and the tiles on the floor got the AC emblem in them. Really? Huh. So near as we could figure, it went from California to some place in Nebraska. Mark Heitman got it off a farm in Iowa. Huh. Well, it's for being a California tractor, um, the paint isn't too bad. It's faded a little bit, but no, it's not. And the tractor wasn't in that bad a shape. Uh, we're not terrible afraid to tear things apart and fix them but when it came to the rear end problem we did take it to Hamels and worked on it there yep. because it required rear end jacks and cab jacks and things we don't have yep and then we had Troy to kind of tell us which direction to go yep but all the labor was performed by us okay yeah so I have had this tractor in many pieces. <laughs> How many hours are on it? You know, I'm not sure, and the hour meter was not working. Okay. We, we do know from talking to the dealer in California that they did overhaul it once. Okay. So it was sold new and serviced at? At San Joaquin, yep. yep. Is, and at this point in its life, I was thinking about overhauling it again. It's using okay. a little more oil than it should. The AC still pretty good and everything? It was until I worked on the rear end and we had to take the AC lines apart and I never charged it back up. Okay. Because I would imagine in hot weather that cab would get warm. Well, those cabs get very warm. Um, when we first had it here, we did use it that one fall on the manure pump and a couple of things. The AC worked very well. Okay. It needs a recharge, but if I got to overhaul it, I got to take it all apart again anyways. Right. Yep. 
We thought that might be a good winter project. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they were, you didn't see a lot of them when they were new. No. And, uh, well, it's a 200 horse tractor. That's a lot of tractor for back then, you know. Yeah. Well, and people weren't buying tractors in the 80s. Well, no, and if you can remember any of that, there wasn't a lot of, you know, the guys that had the newer lines of machinery were the guys that went on the auction block. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, there just wasn't a lot of tractors bought. They, you know. they hit that with a new series. Well, International got caught in it. Yep. You know, new series of tractor, and there was no money in agriculture, and it just snowballed. Yeah, it's, it's too bad that Alice never really got a chance to continue with this tractor. It, was, it had a short life. Well, they, they were, that was all cut short. Like I said, that was only released shortly before they, they were, the doors were shut and there, there was never, you know, it didn't matter if they were a good tractor or a bad tractor, the company wasn't there to stand behind it and take care of it, so. Right. Yeah, it, I think for a long time there, it hurt the resale value, but I think today, a nice one is worth good money because there's enough people that love these. There's one pull up tractor house. It's down south someplace and they got a lot of pictures of it. And it looks like come off showroom floor and I don't know how many hours it's got on it off the top of my head, but they're asking 40,000. Yeah. You know, run of the mill one is probably 30. Yep. You know. Yeah, that's and I guess if you look at it, a hundred and eighty to two hundred horse tractor for thirty thousand doesn't that isn't that bad. No. You know. No nope. when you when you put it against the price of a brand new one. Right? You know. Well and with the rain here, we'll cut it a little short because this is getting hopefully everybody can still hear this, but when Deutz bought them you guys were upset. Yep. And you didn't buy a Deutz tractor. We didn't buy another new tractor until they became egg coalices. Yeah. Now the 8,000, the 8010 was the first 8,000 you guys bought? Or 8030? Probably the, the 8030 was before the 8010. Was that one front wheel assist or two wheel or that? Both of those were just two wheel drive tractors. Okay. Were they fairly new though when you got them? The 8030 came from down south someplace when there was a period of years in there in the early 90s where used tractors were really hard to come by around this part of the country. Okay. And David used to go down to like Georgia and places like that. And that's where the 8030 came from because it came out of a cotton state. It had something to do with cotton because when I first got it home, I had all kinds of trouble. We ended up draining the fuel tank and dumping it out. And we literally got an ice cream pail full of cotton with <laughs> the seeds still in it. Yeah. Um, that had a couple thousand hours on, I think, when we got it, but we ran it for years. Okay, so it was pretty new. It I was mean, fairly new. Yeah. The 8010 was older. And we only had that for a short while. It was one of those deals where we needed a tractor and, you know, bought a tractor and used a tractor and then got rid of it for something else. But that was still a lot nicer cab than what you were used to. Yes. And I've always preferred these cabs over the 7,000 series cabs. Yeah. There just is no room in those. Yep. You know. Is this one got a muffler eliminator on or is that a... This one came with a muffler eliminator on it. Is it run? If I'd charge the batteries, it'd start okay. right up. Um, actually, CJ's over 8050 over here does have it. And, uh, yeah, they sound pretty nice. Well, that's how we could end it, because if people want to... 
unless this one would actually start, but I don't know if it will. Because uh, the, the 426, that's a, not every, it's rare that this one has a pre-cleaner on it too, ain't it? Uh, that's a very rare, CJ could tell you how rare, that you had to order that. I was going to say. That I'd, was special order. Yeah. No, she's dead, right? Okay. The 8050s, right? Oh, you can, I can get to it. You'll be able to hear it, but you won't be yeah. able to see me. Yeah. So this is the 8050. Yep. That sounds good. So there's a good story about him putting the eliminator on this. Yep. That comes as a kit. Yep. You got to drill a couple holes in that plate where that big Donaldson muffler used to sit. Yep. Well, him and his buddy didn't realize it, and they just put the clamps on it. Yeah. And it kept falling off. The 8070 was sitting in the yard with the digger. And I come out of the barn and he's got the side shield off the 8070 looking at to see how they mounted it. And I walked up and says, hey, idiot, you got to drill holes in this. <laughs> Put it on the right way and it's been fine ever since. Yeah. Yep. And no, there wasn't a lot of difference between an 8050 and an 8070, is there? 25 horse. But I mean, like, because they were both 426s. and 426, you could get a power shift or a power director transmission. Yep. Everything was, it's the same rear end. It's the same transmission. It was just power. Yep. Yeah. No, they're, uh, they were uh, a heck of a tractor for, for the Alice guys. I mean, they were, they really um, made a lot of them a big jump with these. 40, 426, if you treated it right and took care of it, it would run for a long time. Yeah. Now, when they put them in the 8070, the problem was there's a fine line in there how far you can turn that up. Yeah. And like 200 horses pushing it or you'll put a window in the block. Yeah. How, how's this been then, the, the DT Agco? It's got almost 8,000 hours on it. It's a 2006. Um, for the most part, it's been okay. We've had an electrical issue with something to do with the transmission a few times. But engine-wise and stuff, the, she's that been... Cummings just runs and runs and runs and runs. Actually, I think I think this is a Sisu, ain't it? On these, I think it is. Ain't it? Oh, maybe not. No, that's a Cummings. Wow. Okay. Huh. So yeah, there's been a lot of changes between equipment, especially on the egg coast stuff. Yes. And and dairy farming, and farming in general has changed so much in these years that, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty crazy to think that, you know. So thank you very much for doing this again. After. Not, not a problem, sir. And, you know, maybe someday when it's really nice, you come back and we'll get them all outside and have them all lined up for you. <laughs> Did you, do you ever go to the gathering of the orange? I have never been, a, when, it was always the week of the county fair. Oh. And the kids were always showing or something. So we've never been able to, to go to that. But, yeah. Um, I'd like to. Yeah. You probably should. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks again for doing that. You bet. All right.